These are solutions to the GCSE revision worksheet on collecting data in two-way tables. Question number one, we've got a list of the coins in a purse. We have to complete this table, this tally chart. Um, go through all of your values one at a time, cross them off as and when you tally them so you don't end up repeating anything. So there are three one pounds. Uh, there are no 50 pences. Go through the list, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty pences. So that should be one, two, three, four. Remember the fifth one is a diagonal bar. And then number six, we have one, two, three, ten pences. Then five pences. We have one, two of those. There are no two pences. And then finally, there are one, two, one pences. Frequency means total. So we have three one pounds, zero fifty pences, six, three, two, zero, two. And just make some final checks. Check that you've crossed off all the numbers up here and that you haven't missed anything out. Uh, count up how many values you've got. You've got 16 here. What you need to do now is add up your frequencies and check that they make 16 as well. Uh, 3 and 6 is 9, plus another 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus that 2 there is 16. Question number 2. We've got some information in the table. We need to answer the questions regarding these five mobile phones. Which of the five mobile phones is the most expensive? Find the price column. Which of those is the largest values? 39.97, so therefore Pixar is the most expensive phone. Which of these mobile phones have MP3? Again, just a case of finding the right column. It's this one here. And read off the names correctly. Pixar and Taco. Which mobile phone has video but not FM radio? Uh, of the three that have video, these two have FM radio, but this one doesn't. So it's crystal. And the question at the bottom, we've got a, a monthly plan, £9.79 per month, 100 minutes and unlimited text included within that £9.79, and then the extra minute is 24 and a half pence. Uh, last month we had 112 minutes used. How much has to be paid in total? Uh, first of all, a little problem in that these two costs are given in different units, uh, so we need to change one. Uh, I'm going to change the nine pound seventy-nine to nine hundred and seventy-nine pence. Um, one hundred minutes free, so therefore we need to pay for twelve minutes, and each minute is charged at twenty-four and a half pence. It's 979 plus 12 lots of 24 and a half is 1,273 pence, which is 12 pounds 73. Question number three. First thing we've got to do is identify what's wrong with the questionnaire. Uh, how much time do you spend using Visage? And then we've got some tick box responses. Uh, first thing. To notice there's no time frame, it's not how long do you spend using it per day, or per week, or per month, that part's missing. Second thing that's wrong with this is your boxes, your times are vague, they're open to interpretation. Um, how much is a little, how much is not much. So something like vague times or the tick boxes should have specific minutes or something like that. Uh, design a better questionnaire. How long do you use Visage per day? Same kind of question, but include the time frame. And this time with your tick box responses. Make sure you give more specific responses. And make sure your boxes don't overlap and that all possible answers are covered. Jazz is going to give his questionnaire to his friends. This may not produce a good sample, give one reason why. Um, it will end up producing a 
biased sample because all his friends are likely to be very similar to him. It's not a wide enough sample, there's not enough range of different ages and types of people. Question number four. Very similar kind of question. We have to design a questionnaire. Something similar to before. Um, ask a question that includes a time frame. For example, how many times a week do you visit the club? And again, provide tick, rock, tick box responses um, with exactly the same uh, criteria. Use numbers. Make sure your boxes don't overlap. Make sure every box, uh, every response can be recorded. And again, for part C, it's too narrow a sample. They're all likely to be similar to him, given that his friends. We then have a table of information about runners in the club. We need to take a stratified sample. We need to sample uh, 50 runners, and we need to know how many male runners with an age of 30 to 39 we should take. Well, the first thing we have to do is work out how many of them there are. Male runners, 30 to 39. There's 45. So 45 out of 365 is the proportion of runners in the whole club who are male and between 30 and 39. And we should take that proportion of the 50 runners for the sample. So 45 over 365 times 50 is 6.16. Rounding that to the nearest whole number. We should take six runners. Question number five. Uh, we're wanting a suitable data collection sheet for finding out the method of transport people take to a travel, uh, people use to travel to a shopping centre. And notice the difference. It's not a questionnaire we're asked for this time, it's a data collection sheet. Most appropriate data collection sheet is a tally chart with method of travel in the first column, then columns where you can tally the responses and you can add up the total and then we need to list the possible responses we might get we might get bus, walk, car, taxi and other at the bottom for any other possible response question number six we have a two-way table showing information about how students travel to school one of the students has picked at random we need to work out the probability that this student will be a boy who walked to school yesterday um, so we can see from the table there are 24 students in total. To get our probability, we need to know how many boys walked to school yesterday. That's where we're going to find the information from, but that cell is blank at the minute, but we have enough information to work out how many boys walked. Um, seven students walked all together. Two of them were girls. That means five of them must have been boys. So the probability that the student is a boy who walked to school yesterday is five out of 24. Question number seven. Um, we have to work out the number of children in year four who can swim and the total number of children in year five. And we've got some information, bits and pieces of information about how many students in each year group and for each year group we're told um, some of the numbers that can swim and some of the numbers that can't swim. Best way to display this information is to use a two-way table. So we've got year groups four, five and six. We've got some students who can swim and some who cannot swim. And in a two-way table, you need a column and a row for total. And then we start to fill in the values that we know. Well, we know there are 96 children in total. We know 37 of them can't swim. We know that 11 children in year four cannot swim. There's year four, there's not swim, there's 11. 21 children in year five can swim. So 21 there. We know the total number of children in year 6 is 30. So we put a 30 down there. 18 of these 30 children can swim. From there, we can work backwards from the information that we've got. And we can find the answers to the questions. So maybe start over here. We can work out how many children can swim by taking the 37 away from the 96. And that leaves us with 59. If there are 30 students in year 6 and 18 can swim, then that must leave 12 that can't. 
Um, if we take these two values away from 59, that will mean there are 20 students in year 4 who can swim. Likewise, if we take these two values away from 37, we'll be left with 14 here. And then we add up these values to get the total in year 5 and the total in year 6. So the number of children in year 4 who can swim is 20. And the number of children in year 5 in total is 35. Question number eight is another stratified sample question. Um, work out the number of girls from year nine in the head teacher's sample of 50 students. There are 59 girls in year nine out of 300 students altogether. So we need to take that proportion of 50 students to find our sample. 59 out of 300 multiplied by 50. 9.83, which rounds up to 10 students. Question number 9 is another stratified sample question. The difference between this one and the previous one is in this one you're not told the total number of students. You need to work that out first of all. So 460 in key stage 3, 320 in key stage 4, and 165. 945 students in total. Number of students from key stage 3, 460. So that's what proportion of our students are key stage 3 students. We need that proportion of 100 for our stratified sample. 460 out of 945. Multiplied. We need 48.6. We need to take 49 students. <coughs> 